What's up guys? I've just finished up my chest and shoulders workout that I've been doing for a while now. It is late at night and just got done training, you know. I kind of train whenever I can. Usually try to do it early in the day, but today I just happened to do it later because I have friends over and uh, well, I just hung out with them. But I've actually decided that I'm gonna be putting more training videos on my channel. Right now, I just graduated college. I have a life update video coming soon, or I've probably already posted it, but I'm gonna actually be doing like more workout footage and vlogs and like, be trying to show my more personal life as someone who's a bodybuilder and I do all these other things too but uh, yeah so one thing I've decided lately is I want to get all my workouts that I currently do up uh, and on YouTube and show you guys what I do so I can help you out or just if you enjoy watching training whatever it might be I've been on the same kind of split for about two years now so the way my, work, my split works is it's about an eight to ten day split but the way it's supposed to be, ideally, is day one is leg day, quad dominant, and day two is chest and shoulders, which is the one I did today. Day three is back and arms. Day four is a rest day. Day five is leg day again, but it's hamstring dominant, no quads, hamstring and calves. And day six is chest and back, and then day seven is arms and shoulders, and day eight is another rest day. So it's an eight day split, but usually I throw another rest day just because I don't like training six days a week. It just kind of beats the crap out of me. I don't feel very recovered. So usually I take an extra rest day in there. So usually it's like eight to 10-ish days by the time I actually finish the entire thing. The first workout I'm gonna be showing for this is gonna be my chest and shoulders workout. But I've been doing the same general workout structure. I usually start with a machine or an isolation movement. And then my second exercise is gonna be a heavy incline press, uh, dumbbell, barbell, whatever. And then my third movement is going to be side lateral raises. Uh, fourth movement is going to be some kind of shoulder press. Usually I do a machine, but because I'm training in my garage, I've been doing dumbbells instead. And my fifth movement is going to be a chest fly. So basically just like a dumbbell cable or machine fly. And my sixth movement is going to be a rear delt fly. So some kind of variation of that. Now, the way I like to do exercises, I don't like to switch it up every single week. Uh, you guys know I don't like doing that. If you want to alternate week, uh, week by week, that's fine, like two movements, like one week you can do one, the other, you do a second movement, then you uh, do the first movement again the next week, and then and so on, you know? You can do that, but I like kind of like sticking with the movement until I plateau, or I just get sick of it, I feel like it's not effective, then I'll switch it out, and I'll kind of rotate movements for a period of time. But these workouts are actually pretty solid. I progressed on almost everything. Only things was my heavy compound. I got the same amount of reps with the same weight as I did last week, and uh, my, Fifth movement, my fly, I actually ended up going a bit lighter than last week just because I was looking at my videos from last week and I didn't get the best range of motion, so I tried to improve on that this week. But uh, going this workout, guys, I was actually pretty tired. I slept less than five hours last night for various reasons. Um, was up late for stupid reasons. I was watching Game of Thrones <laughs> late at night, but I would say more so, I actually had a job interview this morning. Uh, so I was up late, just kind of getting ready for that. Over psyching myself out, you know, but I think it went good today. Uh, it sounds like I'm gonna get a second interview. And after that, I decided to try to nap for a few hours and that kind of failed. I ended up either just watching Game of Thrones or I just couldn't sleep. I got maybe 10 or 15 more minutes of sleep. Then I hung out with some friends till nighttime and I just had to train that night and want the best sleep. But uh, with that being said, I overall made pretty good progress on this workout. You know, another building block to uh, the tower. Progress takes time, especially when you're like me. I'm over eight years of training, so progress is not going to be as fast as it is when you're a beginner, but I just always try to progress and work out. Anyways, guys, enough blabbering. Here's the workout. So the first movement I did was a machine chest press in my garage, basically. That's where I'm training. So uh, why, what I usually do for this, I do one top set, and then I do a slightly lighter back off set. And usually the back off set's either going to be a drop set or a rest pause set. So if my first set, I did 200 pounds, which was the full stack, actually, for 15 reps. So... Pretty much I maxed out the rep range I'm usually doing for this. I got 15. One thing you can kind of see I'm doing is I'm really trying to make sure I'm not just bouncing it down. As the set went on, the eccentrics were a bit less towards the end. I guess the beginning I also slightly paused it at the bottom, but overall not bad. Um, I am doing it slightly lower because I'm trying to hit my lower chest more with this. And as I go on um, to my next set, actually did slightly better form so i went down to about 180 which is like 20 pounds lighter so two plates lighter really try to control a bit more and actually make sure i was pausing so yeah um after i did this though i believe i got like 14 reps i think um 12 13 or 14 i don't remember exactly 
you can see in the video. But um, what I'm doing is I'm basically going to go to failure on my first attempt. So the way this works, I go to fail failure on my first attempt, and then I take about a 15 to 30 second break, go again to failure, and then go again to failure. So for time's sake in this video, I did cut out the breaks just because I don't want to make the video like super long. Um, I showed one of the first breaks, but then I went back to my second attempt. For this one, I'm pretty sure I got five reps, and then my next one, I got like three. So yeah, usually the way a rest pause that works is if you're actually training to failure, it's going to be very exhausting. So for your first attempt, you might get something like 12 to 15 reps. Your second attempt, you might get like five to seven, and then your third attempt, you'll probably only get like a few reps. So yep, last attempt. As you can see, the first rep is already pretty straining. You can see it in my face, but uh, I got, it looks like four reps here, right here. Yep. So that was the first movement, two pretty intense sets. So my next movement, which is my heavy compound, is uh, Bravo Incline. So as you can see here, the bar is heavy. Just kidding, guys. <laughs> it's my warm-up. So I actually am showing my warm-ups for this movement just because I can talk more about the movement. Uh, for me, my heavy compound is one of the most important movements in my workout uh, just because I think it's when you really get to improve your strength and also build a lot of muscle. So I warmed up with the bar. Then I went up to 95 pounds. For my warm uh for my warm up sets, I'm basically not going to failure. I'm just trying to get the muscle uh, warmed up and also practice this movement so I can nail my top set. So up to one plate now. Uh, yep, really trying to also treat my sets like they're working sets. I'm doing control, getting my setup right, and trying to just nail the movement so I get it down. And for this movement, I actually like to do an extra warm set just because it gets the movement feeling better. And I know for bench, if I just go really heavy all of a sudden, it's kind of a shock to my body. And a big part of like a pressing movement is how heavy the weights feel. If they feel heavier, they're going to be worse. So here's my last warm up. I just hit 175 for, uh, it looks like a double. Yep. So the lockout is a little bit tough here, but ultimately it felt pretty good. So now to my first working set, my top set, which is 185. So what I will say is that uh, barbell incline bench is probably my worst lift I do right now, but uh, I end up getting seven reps, as you can see. So still controlling the weight, not really pausing at the beginning of the set, but I am controlling the eccentric, not just bouncing it. Uh, my left side always gives out first. It's one problem I always have. So here's when I start pausing. Uh, I actually paused a bit too long in this next rep, but I end up getting it. So yep, look down. I'm hold it, pause, and... <laughs> I had to fight through that, but I got it. Grind it through till the end. If you guys don't know, my left pec is torn um, from years ago. And real quick, before I go on that tangent, here's my back off set with 155. Um, I believe I got 12 reps here. Yeah, I got 12 reps. But um, So my left pec is actually torn from like back in 2018 when I was powerlifting. I didn't really know how to train for powerlifting. Um, Bench actually used to be my strongest lift. Back when I was like 17, I got 225 for 10 reps. And then I strained my pec, and then I tried to train through it like a dumbass, and I eventually tore it. But uh, I was able to recover and get back to training. But uh, after I kind of got back to training was when I switched over more to bodybuilding. And so my bench hasn't really like um, been my best lift ever since, and I actually stopped doing barbell. But now I am uh, bringing barbell incline back in the, into my mix. Um and I'm really trying to get strong on dumbbell bench. So once I do bring barbell bench back in, I will be pretty strong. But yeah, so that was it for barbell incline. Uh, progressed from last week. And now we're moving on to some side lateral raises. So here I am doing a set. Of, I think I did like 26 or something reps with a 35. So what I'm really trying to focus on here is using relatively strict form. So not just using a ton of body English. Uh, I am moving slightly just because that will happen, but I'm also making sure I'm bringing it all the way up. Um, and yeah, doing these high rep sets with lateral raises can be pretty brutal. Um, if I want to, I could probably be throwing it on the 50s with like not as good a form and doing like sets of 12, but I'm doing a higher rep set with like decent form with 35s and still relatively heavy and just ultimately burning, taking a break towards the end just to catch my breath and I'm going back at it. So. Yep, 35s for my first set, and it was brutal. And for my second set, I also did the 35s. So here's a slightly different angle. Uh, and just really, again, as you guys can see, trying not to move my body too much, just really trying to focus on firing the delt as I go up towards the top and really just getting uh, 
good contraction at the top and really just trying to focus on the shoulder and not the trap too much so as you guys can see uh, still is going pretty good but as the set goes on it just gets really fatiguing and towards the end is when i start kind of cheating a bit more so the way i like to train uh, is with bodybuilding is very high intensity lower to more moderate volume and with compound movements i always try to keep my form very strict throughout the entire thing just so i'm not getting injured but for an isolation movement like a fly or a curl i think using some cheating towards the end of a set as long as most set is strict is pretty good so for my last thing i'm doing intenser fire so i'm using a very heavy dumbbell i'm using like 50s and just doing partial reps really just trying to fire the delt and this actually is really tough because it puts a heavy stretch on the delt and then after that i'm doing a drop set so yeah, it uh, doesn't look very effective, but once you do, you'll see how fatiguing it is. So I'm like using the 50s for my first thing, and then I'm dropping down the 35s. So earlier, you guys just saw me bring it all the way up. I came and like bring it partially up. That's how effective those partials are. So 35s and then 25s. Still, I'm having a hard time getting it all the way up, but I am getting up higher. I'm still like feel my delt just like explode almost. So down to 25s and then i'm going into my mom's office where she keeps the dumbbells for her workouts uh the smaller ones i'm doing some uh drop i'm i think it looks like 15s yeah 15s uh or 20s you're always trying to go very hard with this drop set as you guys can see i still have some slight shoulder striations and i'm like almost uh 180 so i'm really proud of that because i'm a lot leaner than i was a few years ago when i was 180 when i was powerlifting and dirty bulking and I'm at a point now where I'm actually going to be doing a mini cut soon, and I'm actually pretty happy with my definition for this body weight. Not very lean, but still like not fat, and I would say overall looking athletic still. So down to 10s, drop sets just getting brutal, and then I drop down to the 5s. And at this point, I'm not really going to hit failure with the 5-pound dumbbells because I could probably do hundreds of reps if I tried it hard enough, but I was really trying to just focus on burning out the muscle, just feel it contract, and... Uh, relax as I'm bringing it down on the eccentric and just really just trying to feel like my delts are about to burst but I did that and then I did some partial holds at the top and overall guys my shoulders were fried after this but that doesn't mean I was done I still had to do my heavy compound with shoulders so what I usually do is I do a machine press but because I don't have that in my garage gym I was just doing some dumbbells so I could actually go heavier if I wanted to uh but I don't have heavier dumbbells in my garage, so I just have to do what I could. I did about, uh, I think I did nine reps of the 60s, really trying to control very slight pause at the bottom, and then uh, just trying to get some good quality reps in. And if I wanted to, like I said, I could probably do 70s, but I was just limited with my weight, so I really tried to control a bit more at the bottom. But yeah, so that was that. And then my next set, well, my next exercise, I did some dumbbell flies. So... I usually try to do cable flies, but I don't have that in my garage gym. I also kind of like dumbbell flies because I feel like they're good for helping to increase the strength of my left pec that is torn from years ago. So I actually ended up going a bit lighter from the week before because I ended up doing my, I think doing like 40s last week and I'm only doing the 30s here. But last week I did the 40s and I noticed with the 40s that I wasn't going down quite as far. So with flies, I was always kind of scared for a long time doing them because my first few years after my injury, I had like a tendency to strain my right pec a lot because I was compensating for it in my movements. So I think that that kind of scared me away from doing flies. I was like scared of straining it, but now I'm really trying to just introduce, oh, ever since I started bodybuilding a few years ago, I did cable flies and now I'm actually reintroducing some dumbbell flies to really just try to improve that range of motion on my pec and also just get some more practical strength in there. So that way my bench can go up and I can really just train this movement. But, uh, yeah, so I end up doing a light drop set, and the weird thing about this movement is, like, it's kind of hard for me to feel my chest while I'm doing it, but as I get up from the bench after my chest, like, has just, like, a great burn to it, so I know it's working, I know it's effective, so I end up doing a drop set. I think I went down to, like, 20s after the 30s and then, like, 15s, but yeah, so this movement, um, I would say not like the best compared to cables if you're talking purely about my muscle connection but at the end of the day if you compare them both on paper like what they're going to do what their effectiveness is they're gonna be pretty similar so i think flies are great for improving your chest 
like trying to just hit different parts of your chest, like the great frame, your lower to mid part. And if you want to hit your higher uh, upper chest more, then I would say do a mass slight incline. But flies, whether dumbbells or cables um, or machine are both great. All of them are great. Uh, I personally prefer cables or dumbbells because machines kind of like feel a bit weird for me when I do flies like that. But right here, I'm in the garage. So I just had to do dumbbell flies. And another thing about flies, I usually do them either first in the workout or midway in the workout because if I do them first, it can be good for bringing blood in the muscle before I do my heavy compound. But for the last year or so, I've kind of had just a machine chest press take the place of that. I think too for dumbbell flies, they do put a bit more stress on your shoulders. I think they're good to do a bit later in the workout when there's like even more blood flowing throughout the body. But so I'm doing this as movement five. Usually I do it right after my chest movements or after like my shoulder stuff. But at this point, I'm just really trying to just like just get a good squeeze on the chest. I have a lot of blood flowing all throughout my upper body. And for with that being said, Flies have a great spot at this part of my workout. So after this was my last exercise, which my last exercise, I did some chest supporter rear delt flies. Um, so for the longest time I did these standing and I got to the point where I was like hitting 50s, but the weight, my form is not the best. And I feel like once you kind of uh, do a movement and your form starts to suffer, it can either mean that it's time to go lighter or switch things out. But I've been doing it for about a year, so I decided to switch it out for this. Um, I have gone heavier with this before, but I'm reintroducing this movement back in my workout. I hit the 20s, it looks like, for about, like, I think 17 reps or something like that. But I also did a rest pause set. So usually for my isolation movements towards the end of my workout, like my flies and this, I'll do, like, one set. But it's going to be, like, one set plus a rest pause set or a drop set. So I did, I think, about, like, 16 reps or 16 to 17 reps with this set. I don't remember off the top of my head and all my notes with me and I'm kind of talking so I can't just count all of them. I know I did more from heavy compounds, but I basically did my rest pause set, cut the rest time out just to save time and do my second attempt. And as you guys can see, I have a slight bend in my elbows. I find that for that, it actually makes it easier to hit uh, my rear delt more. I get a better contraction, kind of trying to point the dumbbell down too more, but I'm really trying to make sure I'm bringing my humerus level to my body and just really just trying to do what I can to feel my rear delt. As stupid as it might sound, I found for rear delts that just doing what you can to really just make sure you feel the mind-muscle connection works great for improving them. So whether it's doing it standing, holding the dumbbell a bit slightly different than I do, or doing it uh, chest-supported, or just doing a machine, whatever hits the best is best. And now that I've hit failure, I'm actually doing some partials. And it might look stupid, but my delts are burning, trust me. But yeah, guys, that is it for the workout. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to showing you guys some more workout footage, and I'll see you guys in the next video.